Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this beautiful conference, Hope for the Sick and Suffering. I am so excited to be here with you because I have done this conference a lot of times in Spanish, but this is my first time to do it in English. Um, so what, what about if we just started doing a beautiful prayer together? In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, thank you so much for having us all together in this beautiful morning. And we pray that your Holy Spirit come here with us and bring us your presence and your peace. And we surrender in you for everything we are going through. Thank you for everybody that, Lord, thank you for everybody that is going to see this conference. And please, um, I pray very um, special for this day is the day of the Annunciation that we can learn a lot from, from our blessed mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou, woman, and blessed is the fruit of thou, one Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for our sinners now and in the hour of death. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Well, thank you so much for um, being connected for this beautiful conference. And why do we have this conference today? Because um, I want to share very fast about who I am, in case you don't know. My name is Paula Umana. I was born in Costa Rica. And um, I am a mother of five children today. But I was a professional tennis player. I was number one in Costa Rica and in Central America in the 90s. And I used to be the most active person you can imagine. I used to practice eight hours a day of tennis and, and being a super active person. Now I live in Atlanta, Georgia. And um, eight years ago, I started to feel very, very weak. And I didn't know what was going on. And it was a neurological condition that attacks all my body. And it was horrible, I have to tell you. And um, I became a person with uh, quadriplegia. I became a person so paralyzed in a bed. Something very important for me to tell you about me is that, of course, English is my second language. So if you hear something funny, you can laugh <laughs> because sometimes my English is not perfect, of course, or I say words that you know what I mean, but but sometimes it's not the perfect word. So then, then I can share with you from my heart everything. But today, um, after that condition, you know, attacks on my body, it was very difficult for me, of course. I suffered so much. And when I was at the hospital, I realized the big need we have to have resources for anybody dealing with suffering or dealing with a confusing diagnosis or dealing with illness. Um, and I love to, to do everything I can to help others on that. So that's why I wrote this beautiful book called 40 Gifts of Hope. Uh, sorry, my green screen is showing it there. Um, but it's a beautiful book and it has 40 short stories to help you on those days that you don't know what to do with all that pain and suffering. And today, uh, that is a Feast of the Annunciation, I wanted to have this special uh, program or conference about our Blessed Mother and how she can help us to deal with our sufferings. Um, for me personally, it's amazing because I was a person all paralyzed in a bed. I was doing very, very bad. And all the doctor says that probably I was not going to get better. But everything that came back on my body and the person you see today is related to our blessed mother and is related to specific dates. Um, like for example, the first time I was able to sit down was in August 2nd on 2015 and this is the feast of our uh, blessed mother of the angels in my country costa rica and the day before that a lot of people went in a, a pilgrimage uh walking for me uh you know my family and then the first time i was able to stand up was february 11 of um 2016, the day of our blessed mother, the Virgin of Lourdes in France. I remember my mother-in-law and a friend called me and told me, um, Paula, today is the day of the Virgin of Lourdes. And that day in the afternoon, 
there was a therapist that came to my house. And that was the first time I was able to stand up and do some steps. So everything is a lot related to our blessed mother, pretty much. It's interesting because I have, I'm a mother of five. And I remember one of my daughters, I have four girls and one boy. And I remember when I was very ill, one of my daughters was very, let's put it a little bit mean to me, or maybe she was not talking to me too much. And that happens when you're dealing with teenagers too. But um, I remember I was always there available for her. I wanted to listen to her. I want her to share with me how she was doing. And it was very difficult because she was just ignoring me. But I remember sometimes, some days, she chose to go and talk to me. And when she used to come and talk to me, you know, for one minute or two minutes, for me was amazing. And I was always there available for her. I was always there available for her. And for me, I used to enjoy so much every time she used to do that. So that's the where our blessed mother is with us pretty much. She's always there available for us. We just need to go to her and talk to her and tell her everything we're feeling, our sufferings, our pains, everything we're going through. And she is there waiting for us to go and talk to her. Um, so I just want to motivate you and me to go closer to our blessed mother, to consecrate our lives to her, to pray the rosary, to you know, have her as our friend. So um, right now I'm a person with paraplegia from my knee to my feet is uh, still paralyzed, but I'm very happy with everything that came back on my body. And I can walk because also a big miracle happened in my life through our blessed mother. Um, when one of my daughters went to Lourdes in 2000. And let me tell you, 2018, it was three years, almost no walking. She was a, in the sanctuary of, a, of, of Lourdes in France. It's a very special place where the sick goes there. And when she was there praying for me, uh, something very special happened in my life. I was with my family in the car. I was going to, you know, we were coming home. But we stopped in the supermarket and I was a lady in a walker, not being able to walk, you know, free to take a plate from the table to the sink. And when that day that my daughter went to our blessed mother, you know, to that she was in Lourdes, that day a lady stopped me in the supermarket and told me about what I'm wearing on my legs right now. And... I'm so happy because right now I'm free and I became a speaker and I wrote this beautiful book and I love to serve the Lord in everything I can do. So today, um, more than sharing my personal story too much, more than you going, you know, finishing this conference thinking, oh, Paula is amazing or poor Paula. I want you to go home. I want you to, well, you're at home. <laughs> I want you to um, have a, a good tool to use every day with your pain and suffering. So for that, I want to share with you a story on my book that is on page number 24 and 25 of the book, 40 Gifts of Hope. Um, and it's a beautiful story about my friend, Charlene. Um, my book has 40 stories. They are short stories that you can read um, on those days that you are not feeling well. So I'm gonna go ahead and read the story and I want you to pay attention because it's very beautiful. And after the story, I have a surprise for you. So be sure you stay connected, okay? The name of the story, uh, in page 24 and 25th is it's going to be okay. So here I go. I'm going to read it to you. I never thought of the power my mother's words will have to help me cope with my physical and emotional illnesses. Thanks to her, I know 
that the recitation of the rosary and the novena of the Virgin Mary is my afflictions. I was 25 when I thought my life had come to an end. I was diagnosed with a multiple sclerosis weeks after the first symptoms such as numbness of the face, double vision, speech disorder, and balance problems appeared. I collapsed on the floor with the phone in my hands and I cried. I did not want to share this horrible news with my boyfriend or my roommates. So I ran up to my room and called my mom. My mom and I decided to keep my diagnosis a secret. She just kept telling me, Charlene, it is going to be okay. She didn't say it would be easy or that my life hadn't changed, but she said it would be okay. She knew that worrying will only make things worse. I learned from my very devout mom that faith and powerful prayers like the rosary and novena to the most blessed mother will help. I eventually moved to Atlanta, Georgia, where I joined the Cathedral of Christ the King and met my husband, Brian. Brian has been a very supportive husband and accepts all of the limitations that MS has put on me. Since my diagnosis in 1996, the medicines available for MS have drastically improved. That's good news for her, right? I currently have just one tisabri, sorry, the name of the medication is tricky, <laughs> infusion each month. And I am humbly proud to say that I am still walking 26 years after I was sure my life was over. I have a wonderful family. And as my mom predicted, everything is going to be okay. So my friend Charlene on page 24 of my book, 40 Gifts of Hope, she says uh, a beautiful advice to us. She says, in your difficult times, use the resource of calling your mother. But remember, if you don't have your own mom, pray and talk to the Virgin Mary, mother of Jesus. She will intercede for you and help you in difficult times. Charlene O'Brien. So I love this story. I don't know about you, but I really love this story because she gave us a very beautiful resource and it's the resource of call your mother. I have the blessing that my mom is still alive and she's 86, I guess. She's in Costa Rica. And sometimes moms are nice. Sometimes moms don't have a filter and they are mean to us too. <laughs> but we have our blessed mother. And I want you, if you're dealing with suffering, with pain, with difficult times, to use the amazing resource to go to your mother in the difficult times. So I'm very excited because, you know, when we read the stories in my book, we can see they are real stories. And that's why I have here my friend Charlene connected with us. And I think it's a beautiful surprise that the story on the book 24 and 25th is Charlene and she's here with us. So Charlene, thank you so much for being here with us today. Um, this is very exciting. And I don't know if you can share with us, you know, when that diagnosis came in your life, you know, I don't know if you can, we can go back a little bit 26 years ago, when you were a student, when you were full of dreams, and you start and this, you know, you, you got this phone call from the doctor, it should be very, very shocking. And it happens to all of us, when this kind of news come with a, with a hard diagnosis, right? Oh, yes. It was very difficult. And I needed help. I needed 
someone to hold me and take care of me because I was so devastated and I was crumbling. <laughs> I really thought my life was over. I had um, a friend of the family who had multiple sclerosis. He could barely breathe. He was in such a wheel. He couldn't move. He was in a wheelchair, couldn't feed himself. That was what I was seeing for myself. I really thought that was going to happen to me. And I could and see straight. So I had to lean on somebody. And I looked to the mother, Mary, and I looked to my own mother. They both were very supportive. My mother was amazingly supportive. She raced out to Atlanta from California to take care of me. And it was hard on her. It was for her to see me like this because she never had before. So she was amazing. She's very, very devout. She goes to church all the time. She says the rosary all the time. My father pa passed away about six or seven years ago from Alzheimer's, which is a very painful disease. And she took care of him from the beginning, even though he was leaving her. Uh-huh. There is something that for me is interesting and is that when, when the doctor gives you the diagnosis in the book says that you and your mom uh, decide to keep it as a secret, you know, um, as a secret of mom, mother and daughter, probably. Uh, I don't know if you can tell us, why did you prefer to do it that way? I was embarrassed and I was afraid what people would think of me. And I, it was really, I was really scared that they would think I was different. And I felt different. I felt that my whole life had changed. And so I wanted to be, I wanted to be isolated and just lean on the mother Mary and lean on my own mother. That's why I didn't tell anybody. Um, only the people that I had to, I had to tell people at work because I could no longer work. I had to leave my job, which at the time was everything. So <clears throat> I had to leave my job. I had to go on disability, very painful because I had nothing to do. It was my job. And my friends were everything to me. And I lost my job and I didn't lose my friends, but I was isolated from them. And I didn't know what to do. I ha Like I said, I'm repeating myself, but that was, I had to lean on my faith. Uh -huh. and, and tell me something. So right now, I mean, it's, it's so many years after... Do you still call your mom every day? Every day or every other day, you know, not constantly, but if anything happens in my life or anything happens in her life, she calls me. She tells me about my sister and she's got friends that she tells me about and my brother who's, who's crazy, but <laughs> I get all the information from her. And she leans on me and I lean on her. I don't know. Do you have any, like, I mean, you still have a mess and oh, I don't yeah. have so many I'm, hard days. What, what yes. do you do every day? Do you have like special prayers or, or something? I, How do you I do feel that? Yes. I have a special prayer that I read almost every day that truly helps me. I read this now. It says, Are you going to read it for us? Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it's beautiful. Um, oh, blessed Jesus, give me the stillness of soul in thee. Let thy mighty calmness reign in me. Rule me, O oh thou king of, king of gentleness, king of peace. Give me control, great power of self-control. Control over my words, thoughts, and actions from all irritability and want of love and gentleness. Dear Lord, deliver me. Give me instead patience and quiet of the soul in thee. Amen. And the best line of this whole prayer 
is give me control over self. Give me control of my mind because my mind spins with the devastation of the illness, which I'm going to have the rest of my life. There's no cure. Mm. I have lots of pain every day. If I walk, which I know I need to for energy and just to keep myself um, stable in my life, it is very painful. So this prayer helps me to just quiet my mind. Oh, if we, if any of you that are, you know, that are, that you're looking at this conference, we'd like to have this beautiful prayer. Just send me an email to paulaumanaspeaker at gmail.com. And uh, I will be very happy to send you the prayer. Okay. Charlene, I don't know. Um, it's interesting because your mom has been very important for you, right? Um, and it's very nice to know that if we don't have, you know, our mom, we have our blessed mother. And we can go to her and, you know, give her, give her every day our sufferings and ask her to help us. I'm sure she does. She intercedes for us, right? She does. Um, but thank you so much for sharing your story with us. And um, so do you do this prayer almost every day? The one that you just read or how do you? Um, it's it's by that? my bed. It's by my bed. And especially if I'm having a hard day and I have trouble getting out of bed, because sometimes that's hard for me. Um, I, I go to the prayer and I repeat the one thing the one line that is so special to me and that's quiet my mind and that I have to do that. Uh, Charlene, I imagine some people um, maybe have a mess and they're going to see this um, conversation we're having or maybe they just got diagnosed with it. What would be a good advice that you can give for them um, considering how traumatic it was for you the first time you know, I don't know if you can give them some advice. I'm in tears right now <laughs> this is for me to talk about. Um, advice. Everyone needs, everyone is going to need help with this um, disease, whether or not you can turn to friends, to family, or to Mother Mary, or to God in any way. You're going to need help because it's not gonna be a cure. There's no cure. So you're gonna need medicine. You're gonna to have to exercise as much as you can. You're gonna to have to treat the pain and you're gonna to have to lean on, on someone. Uh-huh. I think also something very good is about um, a story in my book about, you know, something I learned also through my illness is at the beginning we pray, God, God, please help me. And maybe God makes the miracle and he heals you. Uh, you try everything medical, but something also really good is to offer your sufferings and to learn about it. And that sounds like, oh, I don't want to offer my sufferings. I don't want to suffer. But it's something beautiful if we learn the way how to do it. And this is the topic where we're going to talk about in our next conference on May 6th, um, how to, we can get trained about offering our sufferings. So Charlene, thank you so much for this morning, for being with us. God bless you thank for this time. And, um, everybody that sees this conference in the future, um, you know, pray for Charlene and for me and for, you know, everybody that is dealing with, with illnesses and sufferings. But thank you so much. And, thank you. And I hope we can have coffee one of these days together because we both are in the same city. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Paula. Okay. Thank you so much. God bless you, Charlene. So before we go home today, I want to share with you a beautiful song that uh, is in Spanish. And I know it may not be that easy for you to, um, to understand the song, but just close your eyes and enjoy this beautiful song for our blessed mother to talk to you. And the meaning of the song is, I want to walk with you, Mary. Um, and I want to give you everything to you. So I'm going to go ahead and share it with you, and I hope to see you on our next conference that is going to be on May 6th. God bless you all, and we keep in touch. 
please follow me through the YouTube channel, Paula Humana Speaker, or you can go to paulaspeaker.com. God bless you all. And here we go with the song. Quiero caminar contigo, María, pues tú eres mi madre, eres mi guía. Tú eres para mí el más grande ejemplo de santidad, de humildad. Quiero caminar. Contigo, María, no solo un momento, todos los días necesito tu amor de más. 